Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Rooted Fellowship Digital. Um, though we are meeting in person, so if you're wondering, are we meeting in person? We are. Uh, you can go to our website for more information about that. But this is our digital platform. Uh, it's our way of engaging with you with the good news of the gospel, even in a time such as this. Uh, my name is One. For those who don't know me, I get the privilege of serving as one of the pastors at Rooted Fellowship. And today I have a incredible human being with us, uh, a good friend, uh, uh, an individual that I'm looking to develop an even deeper uh, friendship with, and, and someone that I'm hoping that we as Rooted Fellowship would get to know, uh, get to know him, his family, and what God has called him to do. His name is Reggie. Uh, I'll get him to share a little bit about himself in a moment. Uh, he's looking to plant a church in the Centurion area, uh, which is super, super exciting. Um, and so before we jump into that, uh, I want to share a passage uh, from God's Word uh, that in a sense fuels us uh, to plant churches. It fuels us to do what we do. Um, because God has called us to make disciples. Uh, we know this as the Great Commission, even though some of us treat it as the Great Suggestion. It is not. It is the Great Commission. Um, and so I'm going to read uh, this uh, piece of scripture to us to, in a sense, warm our hearts to prepare us for what we are about to dive into. Uh, and it's going to be super exciting. But uh, hear these words of our Father found in Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to read from verse 16. This is, uh, in a sense, Jesus' kind of final words, his parting words to his disciples uh, uh, before he ascends to go and be with the Father. Uh, so it, it says this, The eleven disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. To be quite honest, uh, it doesn't really matter what comes after this. Um, we should just go, okay, we'll do it. If all authority has been given to Jesus uh, in heaven and on earth, it's like, well, then that's where I want to be. I want to be following the one whom all authority has been given. Uh, but he doesn't leave it open-ended. He then tells us what all of this means. He then says in verse 19, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Um, and so th th that's Jesus giving us the Great Commission, saying, go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, and then he doesn't kind of leave us on our own. It's not like, uh, good luck, uh, I'll see you when I return. But he says he is with us every step of the way. Now, uh, why do we plant churches? We're going to talk about church planting in a moment. But why, why do we plant churches? Well, it's because we believe at Rooted Fellowship, and if you've been part of the family for a while, you know this to be true. I mean, we've uh, recently planted two churches, uh, Cicle and Reino, which has been an amazing, amazing journey. Um, and we want to plant more churches. We want to be involved in church planting, uh, whether it's from uh, Rooted Fellowship or if it's from friends around the city. We want to see more and more people reached with the good news of the gospel. The reality is, even if today we planted a thousand churches, it still wouldn't be enough uh, to reach all the people uh, that need to be reached with uh, the good news of Jesus. And so we want to uh, be active in that. We want to be obedient to that. And so why? Why plant churches? Well, we believe it's the best strategy uh, to make disciples. Uh, we see it in the book of Acts as the Holy Spirit moves from place to place and context to context people coming to faith, and then the establishing of local churches so people are cared for and loved and then sent out to go uh, and preach Jesus, share Jesus where they live, work, and play. And so uh, I'm not going to preach a sermon. Uh, I, some of you are probably getting comfortable opening up your Bible and going, okay, one is about to preach a sermon. I'm not. Uh, I want you to hear from our friend here today, uh, Reggie, about what God has called him uh, to do. And, and But before we get into that, let's... Uh, Let's get to hear a little bit about who you are, all right? So I said his name is Reggie, but he does have a last name. Uh, he is married and has children. So go, go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, hi, guys at Rooted. Uh, great to be with you today. My name is Reggie, as Ona said, uh, Lamiki. Uh, some of you might find that surname a little bit hard to pronounce, but it's very similar to Lamiki. So 
If you know how to pronounce that, you should be able to pronounce my surname. I'm married to Mbali, I should say, the awesome and wonderful Mbali. She, Amen. she indeed is a wonderful woman. Amen. Um, and together we have three boys. Um, we have Njabulo, who's the first born, Lulami, the second born, and Lubabalo, uh, the third born. All of them. Um, lovely, energetic boys. Uh, they keep us up, uh, keep us young. Uh, they're really, really great boys. Uh, a little bit more about me. I am from a township called Tembisa. Grew up there. Uh, moved to Midrand to study. Then from uh, my time in, in student ministry, or well, in s as a student, I got saved. And then the church that I was um, I saved through invited me to come and work for them. Got there, started working for them, and I've been there ever since. Um, so that's a little bit about who uh, Reggie is. Very cool. Very, 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 very cool. And uh, and we share a kind of a similar narrative in uh, our exposure to campus ministry uh, and, and the important role uh, that uh, it plays in our society. I see it in many ways as like a, uh, a leadership pipeline. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's really cool to yeah. be able to, uh, to share stories of what God uh, has done and continues to do um, on the, the various student campuses yeah. across uh, this country and, uh, and the globe. Yeah. Um, so, so what are you currently doing at the moment? You, you, you said that you are at a, uh, at a particular church in, uh, in the Midrand area. Uh, maybe share a little bit about that. Who uh, is that? I don't know if you're allowed to. I don't know if it's a hush-hush. Um, but maybe share a little bit about who that church is. What are you currently doing? Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, what you're looking to do. Yeah, yeah. Then I can let you share about uh, what the church is. So the church I was saved through is uh, Christ Church Midrand. They had a student ministry called Focus. Um, at the moment, I'm part of the church and uh, work there at the moment. I need to say that over and again. Um, as the young adults pastor, so you, I lead our young adults ministry at the church and I also help uh, lead the evening service. Uh, with another guy called David Gobedi, whom some of you might uh, know. Uh, so yeah, that's what we do. Student ministry, lead the young adults. And with that particular group, what we've managed to do is we've managed to build a number of uh, missional communities, if you like, or life groups, uh, a number of people whom I'm hoping that with the next uh, adventure that God has uh, uh, in line for me, that they would join me. So it's what I've done for the last two and a half years or so. Um, yeah. Very, very, very cool. Very exciting. And I know David. Uh, he's, a, he's a good man. Uh, he's a really good guy. Um, and at, at some point, uh, I would love to invite him to Rooted and have him come preach. Um, he's a phenomenal preacher. Um, but let's let's talk a little bit about um, what you believe God is calling you to do. You alluded a little bit to it and yeah. hoping that some people would join you. Yeah. Um, join you in, in what? Uh, and join you where? Um, what, what has God laid on your heart yeah. uh, in the last couple of years? Yeah. Uh, so let me first just a step back. I think with uh, leading this particular ministry and seeing uh, missional communities being started, uh, it, it has planted a desire in me to actually... Uh, see more disciples being made, uh, and and especially in a particular area. Um, I think Centurion is one of the areas. It's very close to Midrand, and I've just always had a, a heart for that particular area and just hoped that God would do something through it. Uh, so through this very ministry that I've, I've been at uh, with a few of the people that are there, some of whom actually stay in Centurion, we've just been praying and dreaming about actually doing something in that particular community. I mean, I mean, like you, we, we believe that um, God sends us out to make disciples. Um, and that actually, as disciples are made, new communities of faith are formed. So wherever you find yourself, new communities of faith are formed, and then obviously churches uh, can then be planted from that. But totally agree as well with the church planting is one of the best ways to make disciples. And so that very desire just, just compelled me to, uh, to consider uh, and pray about, especially with my family, about uh, about planting in the area of Centurion. I mean, in, in one sense, as a family, we do a do have a little bit of uh, church planting experience. Uh, we had been part of a plant that we were part of a leadership of uh, before we came back to Christ Church Midrand. And so the desire has always been there uh, for us to then be sent out from our very church to, to see if we could uh, continue to expand the kingdom, because that's what we want to see. Um, I mean, I love those words from, um, from Matthew 28 because they remind us that Jesus is king. He has all the authority. And so we want to see his kingship in one sense established in, in various areas, in, peop in, in various people's lives, 
And I mean, that's, that's, that's a desire to see that, um, to see these communities living under the kingship of Jesus and those very people going to their workplaces and different places and living in that particular way um, as having Jesus as their Lord. Mm, mm. So good. So, so good. I'm excited. I'm, I'm really excited. And I'm sure many of you are as well. Just talking about uh, the possibility of a new community of faith mm -hmm. being established. Mm -hmm. uh, already in my mind, I'm thinking about uh, people who are going to be reached with uh, the good news of Jesus. I'm thinking about marriages that are going to be restored. I'm thinking about addictions that are going to be broken. Man, it's, just, it's, it's exciting. It really, really is exciting. Um, now, uh, Rooted Fellowship, we, uh, we have always said from the beginning we want to be a church planting church. Um, we, we want it to be in our deep DNA, um, mm -hmm. and we've seen the Lord do some amazing things. Uh, and so I get to interact with quite a few people, uh, a lot of individuals like yourself who are saying, hey, I'm looking to plant or, um, you know, I'm on this journey. Uh, and I always go, well, what kind of church are you looking to plant? Mm -hmm. And uh, they usually say a gospel-centered one, which is the correct answer, right? We, we want gospel-centered, gospel-saturated, mm -hmm. Jesus-loving churches. Mm -hmm. um, but, but then I go, okay, cool. So, so now we've established that, right? That is the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, but what kind of church are you looking to plant? Because look, I know we all want to reach everyone. That's our desire. Even at Rooted Fellowship, we say we want to reach everyone, men, women, young, old, from every culture, every background. Um, but at the same time, we also know that there are limitations. You know, by example, if uh, we decided to preach in a particular language, that it excludes a certain group of people. Now, that, that's not a bad thing because we were seeking to be really specific. We're trying to hone in on our vision and so um, when I hear you say you want to plant a church mm -hmm. uh, and having established that it's a gospel saturated church, um, let's answer the second question. Well, wh what kind of church? What are you hoping to see on a Sunday and during the yeah. week yeah. as the Lord builds this? Yeah. And I mean, that's a very loaded question. Uh, there's a lot that can be said there. Um, and so let me just, I think it'll be worthwhile for me to just explain some of the vision uh, uh, behind um, the thinking of our church, which uh, is called Life Point, by the way, uh, and, I'll, and I'll explain why Life Point. You'll Life hear, Point, yeah, in the word, uh, you'll hear that. Um, I like that. I like that. Uh, so the thinking behind it is, um, as a church, uh, our vision is to see uh, people taking a next their next step towards a full life in Christ Jesus. So if you remember the words in John ten, Jesus says he has come so that we may have life in abundance, so to have a full life. So our desire is to see that. Uh, one, we want to see people living the full life, the abundant life, uh, whether it's Christians moving towards a full life in Jesus or people who are far off from Jesus, especially people who are far off from Jesus. Because our community at the moment, the people that will be part of the plant are Christians. But we want to reach out to people who, if I may use these words, um, unchurched and dechurched, um, people who haven't been who have not wanted anything to do with the church, have not had any kind of experience with the church, have not really heard the gospel and church, or the church who used to be part of the church, uh, but left for various reasons. So we want to see those people particularly take their next step towards a full life in Christ Jesus. And that is, that is exciting for us to think about how people can, have, can live the abundant life. Because that's what Jesus has come for. He has come to give us that, the abundant life. So it's exciting for us to think about that, uh, seeing people living the full life. And the way we want to do it, the word life is actually an acronym. Uh, we want to live intentionally. Um, so among our friends, our family, our colleagues, we want to live intentionally in such a way that we love them. Uh, we show them the very same love we've received. And the second, second word sounds a little bit corporate. Um, we want to incorporate people or invite them into our spaces. So not just live intentionally, but invite them into our spaces. Invite them to our dinner tables, invite them to a braai. Simply have them being incorporated to us as a community or as individuals who are just hanging out. Mm -hmm. And third, we want to see those very people becoming fruitful. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to see them coming to know Jesus and beginning to live for him. And really have a taste of what the full life is and grow in that. And last, the individuals in the whole community, we want to export. Um, mm -hmm. We really want to do that. We want to think about how the people who are part of our community can go back to their workplaces, to their families, and live out this life. How in the future we can have some communities there, these missional communities, being exported out and then starting a church, a church plant. I mean, it's been very exciting to hear of how you guys have been doing that. So our desire is to just um, see God do the same work with this church plant. 
Um, but we've thought well as well about the kind of people we think um, we want, to, we're praying actually, I should say, that we want to reach out to. Uh, and it's, uh, it's people that form what you would say an interclass demographic. Uh, so the area that we're looking at at the moment, which is the N14 and R55 in Centurion, so Centurion West, uh, has what you would call, um, so your average South Africans that are poor, that are struggling, uh, so in the, uh, the area of Oliven. And then you've got what you call lower middle class, people who have just uh, gotten a great job perhaps and are just figuring themselves out. And then you've got the middle class as well. So what's amazing about that area is that you've got these three communities intersecting with each other and living with each other, but never really in each other's homes or each other's spaces. So our hope is to do that, uh, is to plant a church that can reach out to all of them so that we can be in each other's faces. Uh, I mean, this is what South Africa looks like. Uh, so our hope is to do that. Um, and I think there's something else I want to say. Um, so that very area has poor people. What I've loved about what the church has done, the church has always been concerned. I mean, the areas when we failed, I know, but the church has always been concerned about the poor. And we've got a lot of churches have done a lot of justice and mercy work uh, to serve those who are poor. But very often I think we serve them, but they don't become part of our lives and our communities. So the hope with this church plant is that you would see that, that we would live life together um, and that it would become normal to us uh, to, to have these kind of communities intersecting uh, and living life together because they're there. They go to the same mall. It makes sense that you would want to plant a church that, that reaches out to them uh, in that way. So that's the thinking behind uh, LifePoint at the moment. Man, that is um, that is exciting. That is a vision uh, that uh, that I I know people would want to get behind. Um, you know, this idea of uh, living together, doing life together with people maybe who aren't like you, uh, who don't think like you, vote like you. Um, you know, and 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 them coming around a table. Uh, yeah. You mentioned that, and I, uh, coming around a table and and doing life together, fellowshipping together, mm. breaking bread together. Um, and and God, God can do that, yeah. even in a country like this, yeah. even with the history yeah. that it has, yeah. um, God can can do that. Yeah. Um, I want to maybe transition a little bit and, and talk about about you and and some challenges maybe, mm-hmm. um, because I I, I know uh, my own experience and I know experiences are different, but yeah. but if I was to share mine, um, our journey hasn't always been easy. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there've been many many challenges. Yeah. Uh, many things that we've had to face. Uh, myself personally, my wife, uh, who's been just an uh, amazing, amazing partner in this journey. Just gotta say that as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, I was, I was giving you that wink to be like, "Yo, this is your time." Mbali, are you watching? Um, but um, but but it is it is tough. It is it is hard. And even in the in the preparations, I mean, we're almost six years old mm-hmm. as a as a church, and um, and I can go back to to those early days and remember. Oof, there were some tough moments. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you mind sharing maybe you know one or two of those that you're currently experiencing? And it'll be good for us to take note of them because because uh, we could be praying for you. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to ask you for some prayer requests at the end. But 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 what are, what are some of those things? Just so that the folks know and are aware of some of the challenges uh, that we face. And I, and I want it to be as personal as you can. Like yeah. um, you know you being a young uh, black South African, you know, guy looking to do this in the context that you're looking to do it in, um, it comes with many challenges. So, uh, so, so maybe, yeah, share a couple of those. What, what are some things that you're fi- you're facing at the moment that are that are particularly difficult? So, the first one I think is is anxiety, um, and this anxiety is related to being part of a church plant that um, things did not really work out in. Um, so, the people loved each other. We were we dearly loved one another. Um, but, but sometimes church plants don't work out um, for God knows so many reasons. Um, and so for us, there's been a little bit of a fear and anxiety that, hey, we're going in with this. Uh, we've got a, a great desire to see our people being reached out. We've got a community of people that are passionate about it as well. But there is a bit of an anxiety and fear that, hey, <sighs> Um, will will this work out? Uh, but the great reminder again uh, is those words you've just read. Um, even when we are anxious, that the very same Jesus who sends us out is actually with us. Uh, he empowers us to do that work. 
So it helps us as a family because, I mean, we've had to struggle with this in Bali and Bali. Um, and what helps us is, is knowing that this God who sends us out once again um, is going with us. Mm. Uh, he's going to empower this work. Mm. Uh, so that's a struggle that comes back, but God just, by His Word, reminds us, by His Spirit, reminds us that, hey, man, I'm with you as you go out with this work. And I'm not just with you um, um, with, by my Spirit, but He's with us as well in the, in the community that uh, He sends us with. Um, and often I don't think we think about that because it does feel like, Oh no, it's it's Reggie's thing. But I think with this community we've been with, it's it's felt like this this is our thing, mm. um, and and that's what's been encouraging that God even empowers us with the uh, with the kind of people uh, He's brought along brought, brought alongside us. So that's what's been very helpful. Um, the second struggle, being young and black, um, you finish your first degree. Um, no one expects that you would go into ministry, uh, especially in your family. Um, the expectation is that you would somehow help the family with whatever uh, struggles or whatever they found themselves. So, in most black families, um, they, there is that hope that you will be able to help out. Um, and I mean, Bali and I have had to wrestle with that. Um, and what's been great to see, even in our wrestling with it, is how God, despite what it might feel like, um, so often it might feel like this wasn't the best decision, but it's amazing how God has provided. Mm. And this is, he's provided so much so that um, if I may be a little bit personal now. Um, so when Bali and I got married, um, my relationship, uh, her relationship and mine with my family wasn't in the best of places uh, because my family was still acclimatizing to the whole idea that I'd gone into ministry. But what, had been, um, what has been amazing is that God has provided for us mm. and to provide for them. To, to help look after them. And so it's amazing how that has been a great gospel witness for them, to see God provide for us and then see that very same provision extend to them. So I, I've, been, I've been amazed by how wonderful God has provided for us. And, and even though I know for most young black South Africans who are probably considering church planting, these are some of the things you will struggle with. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've had to struggle with it even today. Uh, but seeing God providing for us has been, has been amazing to see. And that's the very, th very same thing that has kept me thinking. If God has been faithful to look after us up until this point, man, there's no way that he would stop. He would continue to do so. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's what, uh, those are some of the struggles we've had. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Bro, I couldn't think of a greater way to, to kind of wrap this up. Um, that's so, so encouraging. Mm. Um, Maybe, maybe before I ask you for some prayer requests, is there anything on your heart that you want to share? Anything that, uh, as we've been talking, uh, maybe God's laid on your heart? And, and, and if he hasn't, that's totally cool. Um, but is the, if there's anything that, like the uh, parting words, some last words for, for our folks uh, who are tuning in into this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the parting words would be uh, words of encouragement to you guys. Um, so it's been, it's been amazing to watch your journey, uh, even from a distance, uh, to see what God has been doing. Uh, through the ministry he had rooted. And I mean, it's, it's seeing such things. So for one, Ona and I at one point were uh, part of Transmission together. And I remember then he had a huge desire to plant. And to see how God has worked through your own community here at Rooted is one of the things that have been encouraging for, for, for a number of us who are, who are thinking of church planting. So my, my encouraging words would be, you guys should continue doing the work that you've been doing. Uh, it's been amazing to hear of just... Uh, is it uh, Fellowship City that's been planted through you guys, Red Door, and um, is it Renewal uh, Fellowship as well? It's been amazing to see all of these things. Um, I and mean, continue doing the work that you're doing. There's a lot of people who are encouraged by just watching you from a distance and desiring to see the very same work that God is doing through you uh, in their own communities. If not, much more, because that's what we want to see. We want to see God doing a lot more than we could ever dream, expect, or even ask for. Uh, so, so those are my parting words to you guys. I've been encouraged seeing the kind of work that you've been doing. And I look forward to actually um, uh, preach to you or uh, open God's word to you this coming Sunday. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're excited. And like he said, um, Reggie's going to be uh, preaching for us uh, this Sunday. And, and so you've, you're watching this, um, but we're going to release the audio uh, uh, later today uh, on your favorite podcast uh, channel, I think that's how you say it, podcast channel, uh, wh wherever you go, mm. 
to listen to podcasts. That's where you'll find us. Uh, just search for Rooted Fellowship, uh, and it'll be uh, it'll be up there. And I know it's going to be an incredible mm-hmm. sermon. You're preaching on Psalm 100 and Seven. Psalm 107, um, and and so maybe read that beforehand uh, just to get ready. Uh, it's going to be an amazing sermon. I know it. I've heard this man preach a number of times, and uh, wow, uh, God, God really, really has anointed you um, and has called you to preach his word. And, and so it's going to be, a, a, as we say, a fire sermon. Uh, and I know it's going to bless you. We've been uh, praying uh, for it and we'll continue to pray uh, that it, uh, it uh, has legs and, uh, and continues to work beyond uh, Sunday. And, and then thank you for your honoring words. I, I really appreciate that. Um, man, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so encouraging to hear that, you know, that, that folks are watching what we are doing. Um, and so those words are not just for me or my wife, uh, but I know are for our, our leaders, are for our church. And so if you're part of Rooted Fellowship, those words are for you. Uh, I hope that they would encourage you, uh, that our work is not in vain, um, that, that God God clearly is at work. And so thank you for honoring us in that. And, and, and even mentioning those uh, that God has brought our way, uh, if it's uh, us planting those churches uh, like Renewal and, um, and Fellowship City, and, and so shout out to Reno and Seatle, um, or whether it's uh, creating spaces where guys can come and learn, you know, um, uh, like Reynard with Red Door, just a church planting residency. We, we want to be involved in church planting, whether it's us planting those churches uh, or just creating a space for people to come and learn. Um, and, and so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, before I pray for us, um, maybe, maybe you know, one or two prayer requests. How can people be praying for you uh, and your family? Um, yeah. And I love that, that, you, that you've said family. Because, um, I mean, we're planting as a family in one sense. So it's not just Reggie. So, yeah, pray for that. Pray for Mbali and I and the kids. Um, that we would continue to trust uh, in, 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 in God. Uh, especially not just to provide for us, but to lead us uh, in this work that he has called us to. Uh, to pray for uh, the community that uh, we've been uh, spending time with. So what we've done for most of the year is simply have people over at our house and have a meal. Um, that's what we've done. Our hope is that uh, the people would definitely sense the love from us in wanting them to, to, to move towards Christ and to have a full life in him, and that they'll begin to do, to do the same as well. So, so pray for that community that uh, they would feel that, they would feel loved and cared for, and that they would themselves uh, consider uh, doing the very same things we've been doing, uh, inviting others uh, into their homes, and really being intentional uh, in how they live, and inviting people, and moving people towards Jesus. So, so pray for those two things. The third thing, uh, everyone at Christ Church Media and says I love three points, and it's the Anglican and Baptist thing, so yeah, three points. The third thing you can <laughs> definitely pray for is that we would become a church that plants churches as well. Um, that, that is a great desire to see, not just Centurion West, uh, but to see the whole of Centurion reach out with, uh, with the gospel. So yeah, pray for that. Absolutely. Um, as you were sharing, um, but like, uh, Lord, the Lord was leading me to uh, an Old uh, Testament uh, mm. piece of scripture. You, you mentioned the word space, um, and, and that's what kind of, started making me think a little bit. It took me to uh, uh, Numbers 14. Uh, this is uh, the, the people of God are coming out of Egypt and God mm-hmm. saying, I'm, I'm taking you to this promised land. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, he takes them literally to, to the entrance of it. Uh, mm-hmm. Moses sends out 12 spies to go check it out. They come back with a report. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, two are like, guys, we can totally do this. Let's mm-hmm. go. Yes, mm-hmm. they are giants, but we can do this. Mm-hmm. The other 10 are like, no, can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just... Yeah, it, it, opens up a door of them now in the mm. wilderness, you know, for, for 40 years. And, and that's a, it's a whole story there. But I, I want to take us to the words of, of one of the two who said we could do this. Mm. They saw the giants. Mm. They saw the challenges. Mm. You see the giants. You mm. see the challenges. Mm. Um, but you're sitting here going, I believe God yeah. will, will, will give us this. He has yeah. promised it, mm. and he will equip us to be able to do it. And mm. so... Um, Here's what one of the two guys says uh, in uh, Numbers 14, verse 8. He says, If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and give it to us. Mm. I mean, what a promise. Mm. If the Lord is pleased with us. Another translation said, if the Lord delights in us. Mm. And I believe he is pleased with you Mm. uh, and Mbali and your family and and how you are seeking to be faithful. I believe that he is delighted in you. And so he will give you this space. 
mm-hmm. uh, that you're looking to reach in Centurion. And, and I'm praying that it will become a space that is flowing, which means that it's living yeah. Um, yeah. with milk and honey, that milk will be able to sustain and allow people to grow, right? Mm-hmm. That's what milk does when we mm-hmm. think of a baby. We give them milk so that they might grow mm-hmm. into maturity. But then also that it will be a space uh, that is flowing with honey, that there is sweetness, that there is joy, that, uh, joy that is found in the Lord. And so I'm praying for that. Um, in, in fact, in a moment, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask that you pray with us and that we continue to pray for you yeah. uh, as the weeks go by, as the months go by. We want to uh, keep you guys updated with what uh, Reggie is uh, doing, uh, and we're going to be continually praying for you, brother. Yeah. Uh, we want to see more and more churches planted like yours. Yeah. Uh, we need them. We need them. Yeah. So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much uh, for uh, our brother, uh, Reggie. Uh, thank you so much for his wife and Bali and their kids. Um, Lord, I pray uh, that you would be at work in and through their lives. Um, that God, you uh, would move, uh, uh, that the Holy Spirit would move like a mighty wind. Um, that they would uh, seek to be faithful to you, knowing that you care for them, that you love them. And that is evident because of the finished work of Jesus. Lord, I pray uh, for their church plant. Um, I pray for the area. I pray even now uh, that you are working in the hearts of those uh, who would come through those doors and uh, that they would hear the good news of the gospel, that they would come uh, to the saving grace um, of uh, the Lord Jesus and uh, that they would be plugged into community, that they would be discipled, that they would grow into maturity. Um, Lord, I pray uh, that even now you are going to be healing and restoring and renewing uh, the lives of people in that area. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would send many people to join the team. Would you uh, open up doors right now, Father God, that folks would come, uh, that they would have the necessary resources and the necessary gifts uh, to see this church flourish. And then, Lord, I'm so thankful for Christ Church Midrand. What an incredible church. Uh, years of faithfulness there, Lord, and, and just the work that they are doing there um, and how they have uh, seen uh, more churches uh, come out of what they are doing and more ministries established. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless the leadership there. Uh, what a great joy to know uh, that in our province there are churches like that who love you and love people. Uh, and so, God, this work is yours. Uh, lead as we follow. Uh, in Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen. Thank you.